We're going to take a look at how to find um, the reciprocal values that are on the unit circle for our special right triangle. So for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and then um, also your axis points. Um, when we are doing the reciprocals, you have to remember these three pieces of information. So the cosecant is the same thing as the reciprocal of sine, where cosecant is 1 over sine. The sine is the y value. Um, so don't forget that we already looked at... Um, so you have the sine is the y value. So sine is the y value. The cosine for so y sin cos it's extra fun. So the x and extra. So cosine is the x. And then take for tangent your for y extra fun. So the tangent is y over x. Okay. So our sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x. So then when we look here, the sine is y, so our cosecant is the same as 1 over y. The secant is the same as the reciprocal of cosine. Reciprocal means flip, so secant is the same as 1 over cosine, which is the same thing as 1 over x. We also have the cotangent is the same as the reciprocal of tangent, or the cotangent is 1 over tangent, which is x over y. So we're going to utilize this information when we find our um, values. So we first draw the angle. We find the reference angle. Once you find the reference angle, you attach the point using the hand trick. And then you find the signs, like positive negative signs. And then you evaluate the trig using y sin because it's extra fun. Take your extra fun to go. So on our first one, we have 480 degrees. Okay, so if we've got 480 degrees, we want to know how far past 360 that is. So we're just going to do 480 minus 360, which gives us 120 degrees. So I've gone around one full time and then to 120. Now, when I'm trying to do this quickly, I forego drawing the twirls and I just need to know where the terminal side, the ending side, this terminal side is, which quadrant that's located in. So the next thing is we find the reference angle. The reference angle is how far away from the x-axis it is. So this is 120, this is 180, that gives us 60 degrees. 60 degrees is your ring finger, so I put the ring finger down. I have one finger on the left, three on the right, so that's going to be the square root of one. Everything is over two. On the right side, or the y value, we have the square root of 3. Everything is over 2. Now, there's two ways you can get your sign. I've gone left and up, so this is negative, this is positive. So that's one way. The other way is that you can do the phrase, all students take calculus or choir classes, whichever one you want to remember. It doesn't really matter. So all of them are positive in the first quadrant. The sign and its reciprocal, so cosecant, are positive in the second quadrant. In the third quadrant, tangent and its reciprocal are positive. In the fourth quadrant, cosine and its reciprocal are positive. So in the second quadrant, which is where we're located, it's the S, which is sine and cosecant. Secant is not either of those, so that means it has to be negative. So I know my answer should be negative. Okay. If we look at the secant, the secant's the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is the x value, so I'm thinking flip the x. Well, the x is one, negative 1 half, so if I flip it, it's negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. Okay. If we take a look at the next one, we have the cosecant of 300, or sorry, negative 330 degrees, so I'm going to draw that first. It's a negative angle, which means that we're going clockwise, so I'm going to go around here. Again, if I'm trying to go quick, I forego the twirl. The reference angle is 30 degrees. Again, when I'm trying to go quickly, I forego writing the 30 degrees. I don't need that piece of information to be written down. At some point, you should be able to do the majority of this in your head and just get the answer. So the 30 degree finger is your pointer finger. So that means I have three fingers on the left, one on the right, which means that I have the square root of three, everything is over two, the square root of one, which is just one, everything is over two. The cosecant starts with a C, Oh, I think I forgot to tell you that part. Remind you, rather. I've told you before. The C and the S's swap, so cosecant and sine go together. 
secant and cosine, the S and the C swap, and then you do have to remember that cotangent and tangent sound like they should go together, and they do go together. So technically cotangent still starts with a C, so you do have to remember not to include it in the other two sets, um, but that's how I remember my reciprocals. So then back to here, this starts with a C, so that means that it's the reciprocal of sine. Sine is the Y value, so I'm thinking flip the Y value. Okay? I forgot to attach my signs as well, so I'm going right and up, so both are positive, or all of them are positive in the first quadrant, so I know I should get a positive answer. I'm thinking flip the y, the y is 1 half, so I write 2 over 1, which is 2. Now, when I'm doing this quickly and I know that I need to flip it, I just say 1 half, but when I write it, I go bottom to top. So in my mind, I'm saying 1 half, but then I write it upside down, and then from bottom to top. And then that way it gives me my answer. Flipped already. Okay, if we look at the next one, we have the cotangent of negative 495. So again, this is past one revolution. So I want to know how far past 360 it is, or negative 360. So where it's 135 more. So I've gone around one full time and then to 135, which puts me in the third quadrant. Again, um, our reference angle is how far away from the x-axis, so this is 45 degrees. Remember your reference angles are always positive, so it's not negative 45 degrees. Uh, 45 degrees is your middle finger, that goes down. Oh, that was horrible. Let's try two. Still not great, but that's fine. Two fingers on the left, two fingers on the right. So that means I have the square root of two, everything is over two, the square root of two, everything is over two. I have gone, for my signs, I've gone to the left and down, both of which are negative. Um, and then the cotangent is sounds like it goes with tangent, and it does. So it's the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent is y over x, so I'm looking for x over y. So now on tangents and cotangents, we only care about the tops. The reason we only care about the tops is because the bottoms will cancel. So I'm going to go the long route here. If I take the top of the x, it's negative root 2 over 2 over the top of, or not the top of the x. If I take the x over the y, it's negative root 2 over 2 over negative root 2 over 2. Hopefully you can see right now that this is 1. If you go the long route and flip and multiply, we have 2 over root 2. But notice the 2's cancel. Oh, I dropped a negative, don't do that. Put that negative there. So then we get negative root two over negative root two, which is just a positive one. Now, this part where it cancels the twos will always happen because everything is over two. So that's why we can shortcut it and just do the tops of the x and the tops of the y. So if I take the top of the x, that's just negative root two, over the top of the y, that's also negative root two, which simplifies to one. If we look, this is all students take calculus. Here, that means we're in the third quadrant that the tangent and its reciprocal, which is cotangent, should be positive, so I know my answer should be positive. So there's two ways you can go about finding the signs. I don't care which way you do it, I just need you to be able to do it. Now, when we get to radians, if you remember about radians, all of your odd pies are on the left side, and all of your even pies plus zero are on the right side. So zero pi, two pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, and it keeps going. And this is true even when it's negative angles. Um, this would be negative pi, negative 3 pi, negative 5 pi on this side, and then this would be negative 2 pi, negative 4 pi, negative 6 pi, and then you still have your 0. With your radians for pi thirds, pi six, and pi fourths, any number pi thirds will have a reference angle of pi thirds. Any number pi fourths will have a reference angle of pi fourths. Any number pi six will have a reference angle of pi six. So that makes it quick, which is great. Um, and with your radians, you're either going to be one above or below a whole number. So I just need to figure out what's the closest whole number and then know if I'm a little before or a little after that. So 7 pi thirds, 3 goes into 7 twice. I have one left over, so this is just a little bit past 2 pi. Again, if I'm trying to go quick, I forego doing the twirl. Then you should theoretically remember, I've told you this before, the reference angle is pi thirds, or we've just gone, it's how far away from the nearest whole number it is, which is pi thirds. Pi thirds goes with 60 degrees. So pi thirds, the threes and the sixes swap. 
So pi thirds goes with 60, pi six goes with 30, and then for the pi fourths, the fours match, so the four goes with the 45. If that helps you, great. If not, then figure out your own way. So the reference angle is 60 degree, which is your ring finger. So I put that finger down. So that means I've got one on the left side and three on the right side. So that's the square root of one, which is one. Everything is over two. The square root of three, everything is over two. I'm in the first quadrant, so all of them are positive, or I've gone right and up, so both are positive. The cotangents, the reciprocal of tangent, tangent is y over x, so I'm going to flip it and I'm going to do x over y, and I only care about the tops. So the top of the x is 1, the top of the y is root 3. Now hopefully you're getting better with your rationalizing. I need to times by root 3 on top and bottom, so that gives us root 3 over 3. And then that will be our answer. We take a look at the next one. We have negative 11 pi 6. That 6 goes into that almost two times. It's just shy of 2 pi and it's negative 2 pi. So remember we're going clockwise on a negative angle. The reference angle is pi 6. Pi 6 goes with 30 degrees. 30 degrees is your pointer finger. Uh, so that means that I've got three fingers on the left and one on the right, so that's the square root of three, everything is over two, the square root of one, which is just one, everything is over two. We've gone to the right and up, so both of them are positive, or you could do all students take calculus. So all of them are positive in the first quadrant, so I should be anticipating a positive angle. So the secant, starts with an S, so it's reciprocal, starts with a C, so that's the cosine. Y sin cos, it's extra fun, so I'm thinking flip the X. So if I take the X value, that's the root three over two, so it's gonna be two over root three. Again, what I want to do is I say in my mind root three over two, and then I write root three on the bottom and two on the top. So I'm saying the actual fraction, and then I'm just writing it top, or sorry, bottom to top so that it flips it for me. When I times here and rationalize, this is a new rationalizing one that you haven't seen yet. I'm going to times by root 3 on top and bottom, so that gives us 2 root 3 over 3. Um, and then that becomes our final answer. If we look at the next one, we have the cosecant. So we have negative 21 fourths. So 4 goes into 21 5 times and you've got 1 left over. So you have negative 5 1 fourth pi. You're going negative, so you're going negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and a fourth. Now this is where when you um, forego drawing the twirls that it's really fast to memorize, well this is my negative, or this is my odd pi's. So I know this is negative 5 pi, it's just a little bit past that, I'm going negatively, so that's going to bump it up here, and then I know I'm in the second quadrant. Um, so that makes it so that it can be faster. The cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I'm thinking the y value. So um, pi fourths is the reference angle, um, pi fourths goes with 45 degrees, 45 degrees is your middle finger. So we have two fingers on the left and two fingers on the right. So we get the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2. We have gone left and up, so that's negative, positive. Um, so we want the cosecant, so we're going to flip y. So in my mind, I say root 2 over 2, but when I say root 2 over 2, I write from bottom to top. Okay. And this is our y value, so it's positive, or you can do all students take calculus. So the sine and its reciprocal, this is the reciprocal of sine, which means that it has to be positive. I have to multiply by root 2 on top and bottom, so we rationalize. Next year in calculus, you don't actually have to rationalize, but um, you're not there yet, so you still get to rationalize. So you get 2 root 2 over 2, but notice that the 2s can cancel, so then you end up with just root 2. So that's how you find the reciprocal values on the unit circle.